This is Thursday, December 20th, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morris Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan, and our cameraman is Dan McDermott. We are privileged to have with us today Pierrette Noé. Welcome, Pierrette. Yeah. Now, we've had interviews in the past for people who have grown up in Germany during the war, in the Netherlands, and in Italy, but uh, you grew up in France. Mm. Yeah. Now, may I ask, first of all, where in France you were born? I was born on a small medieval village called Mossé, M-O-S-S-E-T, mm -hmm. and uh, my grandmother has a farm here, you know, is at uh, 750 meters over the level of the sea. Mm -hmm. the, the quality of air is very healthy because the doctors recommend new babies and all people who have problems with the heart to go on that altitude. And you were born in uh, the villages in the Pyrenees, is that correct? Oriental Pyrenees, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when were you born? I born the 3 of March, 1931. And you were telling me a bit about the, ni the night you were born. Yeah. <laughs> it was, we have a, a north wind, very healthy wind. It's a mm -hmm. very, when that wind blew, everybody who was little children, they put the children outside because the, it's a healthy wind. Mm -hmm. Now, when the wind came from the sea, forget, nobody goes out. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a very strong, it's a north mm -hmm. wind and it's very strong and uh, very noisy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I, I born uh, that night. And the neighbors of my grandmother, they think my mother was screaming because I, I was, bo but I born in the morning only at mm -hmm. eight o'clock. <laughs> and what town do you currently live? Uh, here, in the in, in United States. I live in Natick. Mm -hmm. I love Natick. And your marital status? Well, I'm divorced now. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? Yes, I have four sons. Grandchildren? Gra yeah, I have seven, seven grandchildren. Are we going for great-grandchildren? <laughs> Any great-grandchildren? Oh, no, no, no. Not, not yet? yet? Not yet, no, because I had a, oh, the oldest one, they are only boys, and they don't marry <laughs> very <laughs> young. <laughs> what was it like growing up in your village? Uh, uh, in France? Yes. Well, uh, I don't grow up on a village where I born. Mm -hmm. I grew up on a town called mm -hmm. Perpignan, mm -hmm. who is the, the capital of the French Catalonia. And you were telling me before the interview that when you were in kindergarten, you experienced something of the Spanish Civil War. Tell us about that. Oh, yes because uh, the people, they are talking all the time, and uh, they, they look uh, very anxious, you know, they, they, they look sad. And uh, when the children, uh, myself, when I go near of my parents and they are talking with friends, uh, everybody stopped talking, you know. And uh, because they stopped talking, I want to know why, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was five years old at that time. And uh, I try to listen what they say, and I hear words here and there, you know, civil war, then the dictator Franco is where I hear his name for the first time, and also um, the Republicans, they, they don't want in school, they don't want the children of the Catalans to go in school. That, the dictator don't want any Catalan children to go in school. Because um, the Catalans in Spain, they are the intellectuals in Spain. And Franco don't want anybody who has any instruction. Mm -hmm. uh, he, can, he can be a better dictator like that. And uh, we hear about uh, people be shot. And things like that, I hear that. And it's where I hear the name of Garcia Lorca. I remember my mother was crying, and she says to my father, oh, guess what? They killed Garcia Lorca. I don't know who he was. And I say, he must be somebody famous, you know? And it's funny, when I start to read, the first things 
I went is on a dictionary to know if it's mm -hmm. Garcia Lorca and I don't found it. Mm -hmm. I had to wait when I was 15 to know he was a poet mm -hmm. and he was killed by the army of Franco by the back. Ooh. Oh, they, they are like that. Mm -hmm. They don't kill people on the front, always on the back. You know, it was horrible. And mm -hmm. I hear that. I was just a kid and I, I start to feel the civil war is something very, very bad, you know. But I don't know exactly what it was. Then I hear airplanes, they are coming, and they bomb the Catalans of Spain. And uh, at that moment, I had an aunt who had to go to the hospital because she put a reef, a piece of reef on her eye. And she has my cousin, who was four years younger than me. And um, my cousin says, why do people, they go together and talking like that? But at her age, she, she don't speak French yet, you know, because the first language you have is Catalan. And uh, I said to her in Catalan, because, you know, they are killing people. What do you mean? Because my uncle, her father, and my other uncle, they go hunting on a fall. You know, they, they kill rabbits and then mm -hmm. we eat them. And <laughs> she says, oh, they kill people like the rabbits? And I say, yes, and she starts to cry. And my mother says, why she cry? I say, because I, I told her they kill people on a war. No, 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 you don't have to talk about the war. And here, I, I don't talk anymore. And uh, then she says, when they are killing people, she, my, my little cousin always she asks me questions, you know. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, why we don't play with the dolls? It will be better, you know. And uh, <laughs> By the way, actually, she's four years younger than me. And uh, we write to each other every two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I say to everybody, it was my little sister, you know. But anyway, uh, she says, you think my father will be killed? And I say, no, your father will not be killed. But then they went to the war. Mm -hmm. And the first time I know about that, by then, I was eight years old, almost nine. It was in 1939. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that moment, we see men putting papers on the corner of every street. And people who pass by, they are reading this paper, that paper. And I say, why they read that paper? But they put too high for me to, to read, you know. And uh, they, they say is a general mobilization all the men in hotels from, 20, from 18 years old and over, they have to go on that office, you know, to register for the rest of the war. And is why well, they put that in all streets, you know. And uh, is at that moment, I ask questions. And here my parents, they answer me here now. Uh, they told me Hitler, they uh, invade Poland, Russia invent is an invasion of Finland by the Russians. And all the men, they have to defend the country. Mm -hmm. And it's where I learned at that moment. And uh, then, in 1940, the Germany invaded Luxembourg, Belgium, Netherlands, and France. But they, it was a resistance in France. Mm -hmm and they invade only half of the country until the town of Orléans is a, is a, is a big town on the middle of France, Orléans. Mm -hmm. And um, is where uh, Gino Varc mm -hmm. <laughs> arrived in Orléans to talk to the king to stop the English, you know, at that time. Well, that is, was on the 13th century. And uh, then, in 1942, the 22 of November 1942, they invade the south of France. And here I, we are lucky because uh, for two years, all the north of France until the middle, every children, they have to evacuate. It was an exodus. And in south of France, we, we don't have to do that because Philippe Pétain, Marshal 
Philippe Pétain, was at the head of the French government, and he deal with the Germans. He collaborated with the Germans because he helped the Germans to stop the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Because Hitler is what he wants, kill all the Jews, you know. And uh, at that moment, uh, Philippe Pétain with Daladier, uh, Daladier was like here we call the vice president, you know. Mm -hmm. They bring the government, he make a deal with the German, they bring the government from Paris to Vichy. And uh, Pétain govern from Vichy and collaborate with the German. He, he do bad things. And Daladier was worse, worse than him. And here he was a lot of arrestation and, and things like that. He was terrible. And you know, you are a kid, but you are always thinking, oh my, my gosh, I hope they don't come and arrest my family. Mm -hmm. Because you, you are not exactly, <laughs> you are not Jew, but you, right. you, you have friends who are, and uh, suddenly you don't see them in school. Mm -hmm. And in school, when uh, a student don't show up in school, the teacher always asks, oh, why well, she's not here? And she talked to the friends of that student, and they say, do you have news she's sick? Here, the, the teachers never, they ask. And I remember my, my, one of my best friends, her name was Yvette Levy. I don't know if she was a Jew, you know. Mm -hmm. I play with her, I don't know. And uh, suddenly, we don't see her, and the teacher tells me, oh, you don't have news of her? I say, no. Last time she was in school, we say, see you tomorrow, and is it. And uh, never they ask after that, you know. And uh, little by little, when I learn, there are so many people, I don't know why exactly, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I worry also. And I remember my brother born the 22 of November 1942, and is the day the Germans invade my town. And I never forget, mm -hmm. because my father bring my mother at the hospital on Sunday morning because when they invade us, you are not free of anything. By six o'clock, nobody is on the streets. You have to put big curtains, heavy curtains on the, on the windows. And everybody who don't have papers from the German commandature to go out outside after six, they are shot, you know? And uh, I remember when I go in bed on the night, always I pray the Germans, they came to my house. But one night, on the middle of the night, they came. Mm -hmm. And they know, instead to go by the door, because the door, you have to go in the garden first to go to the entrance of the house. They know we live on around, on a, the first floor, you know. Mm -hmm. And they boom, 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 boom on a, on a window. And you know, it's funny because I, I before they knock the, the window, I wake up. And all I hear is the boots of the Germans. And I say, oh my gosh, I hope they don't stop on my house. You know, you are anxious. Oh, please, please don't stop on my house. And then they stop. And then I hear bum, 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 on the window of the dining room. My father went. He was what he appeared, an officer, a German officer, with the gun, like that, to my father. Open the door, he says in German. But because my husband, my, my, husband, my father, don't speak German, but the, the, he understand because he shows us mm -hmm. to open the door. And uh, my father went to open the door, and me, I was on my bed like that. I say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know. And they go on the dining room. They open the buffet. They check everything. It was dishes, glasses, you know. It was the dining room. And a few days before, I found music on the street, papers with music. My father was a singer, mm -hmm. and I bring the papers to my father. Oh, look, I found some music. <laughs> it was no words, just notes. Mm -hmm. My father looked, where you found that? I say, all the street is full of that. What? 
Don't touch anyone, he said. Why? It's music, I said. No, 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 don't touch anything, okay? It's dangerous, he said. And he put all the papers I gave with the music on the top of the buffet on the dining room. And don't say to anybody, you pick up on the street, okay? What he was, he was, on that music, he was codes. Oh, no. From England and from the underground army. And uh, my, my father, because he knows, you know, he, he, he knows he was some codes. And uh, they went on the bedroom. My mother was in bed. And I had my baby brother, who born the 22 of November, 1942. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, when the Germans, they knock at the window, he was six months old. And he started to sit, you know. And uh, for a few days, he was sitting, you know. Like, uh, mm -hmm. he was the time, he was very strong. And when the Germans, they came on the bedroom, my mother, you know, she was in bed like that. And the, the baby was looking, and here they opened the wardrobe. They put all, all the things we have, you know, uh, towels, everything, all on the floor. They, we don't know what they are looking for. And then, always with the gun on the head of my father, they told him to open one door at the entrance. And we, we call, we call that uh, place because we put all the stuff. He's like uh, the best man, but he was at the, the same level than mm -hmm. the apartment. And uh, here, my parents, before, when the war was coming, they had the cafe hotel. And uh, they sold the cafe hotel because, uh, just before the war, because uh, my uncle was living in Morocco, asked my father if he wanted to buy a piece of land with orange trees. My father, he grew up <laughs> with vineyards, mm -hmm. horses, and he studied the fruit trees. And the family, mm -hmm. the family of my grandfather, my grandmother, they have orchards. And he knows, he studied, he knows how to take care of that. And my uncle who was in Morocco as my father that way is a good deal. They sell that for nothing. It's only oranges, or orange trees, I mean. And um, came to Morocco, and uh, he says to my mother, sold the cafe hotel, because uh, when I come back, we will move to Morocco. But then, it was the declaration of war, mm -hmm. and here he has to stay to go to the war, and is where he had the accident. Well, anyway, uh, at that time, um, what I was saying now. <laughs> All right, uh, the Germans were going through your wardrobe. Yeah. Right. And then they put the gun on, uh, on the head. Oh, never they leave. They mm -hmm. Always the, the officer was like that to my father. They say, now we see everything. Oh, they came on my bedroom. And you know, on the winter, you have, um, we call edredon. It's something to keep warm. It's mm -hmm. full of feathers and it's big, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's very warm. With one of the soldiers who are with the officer, they go like that to know if there's anything on that. And uh, then where I have my clothes, you know, on the wardrobe, they remove everything, they check under the bed, they check everything. I was very scared. Mm -hmm. And then they, they bring my, my father at the door. At the entrance of the house is a big place like that room here. And then it was that door we call the cellar because we put all the stuff we don't need, you know. And because they have glasses from the hotel, because they, they have a cafe hotel, they bring those glasses, perhaps the family will need, but they put here, you know. Mm -hmm. But because one of my uncle was a good hunter for wild pigs, he need a gun who go far because if you <laughs> if you shoot a pig not too far from you, you know, and he's not kill, you are kill mm -hmm. because they are very very strong. They they are they are uh, oh they are worse than uh, than a bull, eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, my uncle says to my father long time ago, you know, he said 
I will need the, the gun you have from your father from the First World War because uh, uh, it will be nice when I go hunting with my friends for the wild pigs. And uh, one of those guns was one of the boxes with the glass because he don't want any of my cousins on me mm. to, to use a gun, you know. They put the hide. What, what happens, where was the gun, was the last box on the ground. And then it was three boxes full of glass. Well, they open the first one, is glass. Then the second one, they move, the ear is glass. Then the third one is glass. They don't, they don't open the last one. If they open the last one, my, my father will be killed. You know, but never we know why they came in our house. But also, my grandfather was the mayor of the town for 28 years. And we wonder if somebody denounces to the commandature because they don't like my grandfather. Because my grandfather was a socialist, you know. I'm sorry, a, a, a socialist? Social, a, oh. a socialist, yeah. Okay. And, um, he, he was a terrific leader for the town. Everybody likes him, you know. He has integrity uh -huh. and everything. But he's some people who don't agree with him politically, you know. And we, we never found out. But we think he must be somebody who denounced my, uh, my father. Because my father, <laughs> he was an athlete. All he liked is sport and a quiet life, you know. Mm -hmm. He trains and he's it. And uh, he never talk politics or anything. Uh, beside around the table when we are uh, all family, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody says his own opinion, but uh, otherwise he never do politics, you know. And we never found who came here. And here, just after that, it was a decree on the I You say decree in English? A decree. A decree. A decree, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah who say all the children below the age of 17, they have to leave the town. And at that moment, uh, we had to go to the, the mountains where I born, mm -hmm. because here the Germans, uh, they, they will not come on a small village on the top of the mountain, you know. And we went to my grandmother, and here we, we meet all the family, mm -hmm. because uh, my uncle has five kids. Mm -hmm. I have a, the sister of my mother as the little girl. I say she's my sister, you know. And here we live at the house of my grandmother until the end of the war. Mm -hmm. But here we had uh, <laughs> my uncle, my youngest uncle, has to live two years on a mine. For two years, he never sees the day and the sun. He lives on a mine. Mm -hmm. And we have to bring food, you know, and uh, to avoid uh, to avoid people to know we bring food, to know where he was, because never you know, you know, you are scared of everything during the war. You are scared somebody who don't like you because uh, he don't like the color of your eyes. You can go to the commandant of the Germans and say bad things about you. And uh, also on a village. The priest of the village was a Frankist. He was for Franco and Hitler. And uh, here is a, a nice story also. A German guy who was a professor in Germany who has terrific method to teach kids very young. He can teach any language, any music. He has a method who was terrific. And his name was Mr. Kruger. And with his wife, they have to flew Germany because Hitler wants him on the concentration camp. He don't want him to teach anymore. And uh, because he speaks French fluently, and he speaks many languages, they decide to go to Spain. But when they arrive at the border, they found Franco was making the same thing than Hitler, you know. Mm -hmm. And here everybody told him, no, don't go, don't go. And he arrived on a village where I born with his wife and a little girl who born the same day than me. And then he has a second one. And uh, 
my uncle, my uncle Jean, was the mayor at that time, and he asked for the mayor. He want to talk to the mayor, and uh, they bring on the house. And we are. I was with my little cousin when he came here, and he said, "I will like um, find a refuge, some place here." And my uncle says, "I know. About five miles from the village is a farm abandoned. It was be that farm long time ago belong." to the clergy of Perpignan, mm -hmm. of the town. And he has a funny name, you know. The name in Catalan, his name is Lacum. Lacum in Catalan means the, the doors open on a valley to bring everybody here. And we think he was terrific to bring Mr. Kruger and his family here. But you know, he's, he was a professor, he was a teacher, his wife too. He was a musician, he played five or six instruments. After a few months, they fixed the place, because the place was very old. Mm -hmm. With his wife, by herself, they fixed the place. Then he asked my uncle if he can have young kids where he can teach here, you know. And uh, orphans, you know, who don't have any chance. And uh, my uncle sent him to Perpignan on a place called um, La Misericorde. is where all the abandoned kids, mm -hmm. they are uh, shelter, you know, with nuns. And here they bring those kids because we, everybody has to evacuate, you know, mm -hmm. all the children. They bring the kids on a coom, a la coom. And here he teaches the kids all the languages he know. He teach them good education, you know. And what is funny, actually, the children of people of my age, they still go into La Coum. It's like now, um, in French we say, auberge is a inn, mm -hmm. auberge de la jeunesse of the youth, a inn for the youth. And they write a, a magnificent book about that. It's called La Coum. Uh -huh. And it's a, it's a nice story, you know. Now, mm -hmm. him and his wife, they pass away, but her two daughters, they, they're still here. But the priest of the village don't like him. Uh oh. He went to the commandature and he says, He's a German guy who lives here, and uh, I know you, you look for him, and they arrest him. Oh. And him, he was prisoner on, um, in Germany. And guess what? He escaped mm -hmm. with the help of English people. What you call is a, is a kind of religion. Oh, I forget the name now. Oh, I can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. It's a religion. Mm -hmm. All they do is help people mm -hmm. around the world, you know. I forget the name of that religion. I don't know if it's a religion, but uh, I know they do good things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I can't remember the name now. Well, with the help of those English people, when they learned about him, they went in Germany and they helped him to escape and he come back to Lacombe. Mm -hmm. But between time, I had a lady on a village her name was Julie, and we call her Aunt Julie. All my life, I think she was related to the family of my grandmother, but I found just last year, we have no relation at all with her. Mm -hmm. But she was very friendly with my grandmother, you know. And she was very religious also. And she played cards with the priests and three other women. I don't know, they have a day during the week where they play cards. And uh, Wendy, she came, she was so excited and so afraid, you know. She came on her house and she says to my grandmother, please, please, say to your younger son to, to leave, to leave, because uh, the, the Germans, they are coming and they are going to put the fire on a village like Oradour-sur-Glane. Oradour-sur-Glane was a village on the middle of Les Cévennes, on the mm -hmm. central France, um, we call Massif Central mm -hmm. in French. And um, a German was killed, a soldier. What the Germans they do, they, they, because he was near of that village, they found the body of that 
soldier next of the village, they say, somebody from the village who kill him, we are killing all the village. They came here, they put all the women, all the old people and the children on a church and they put the fire on the church. And then they put all the men against the wall and boom, 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 they killed them. Those who survive from that village is those who are not here that day. But all the village, mm -hmm. all the village yes. died. And uh, that Aunt Julie came and he says, the priest says in few days, the Germans, they are coming here and they will do the same like, and my grandmother says, how he knows? Oh, he says, you know, he's very, he knows very thing about the commandature of the German. And now I don't trust him anymore, she says. Well, my uncle lived under the roof. He was very athletic, you know, in case the German arrive, because they take all the men first, mm -hmm. you know. They will, um, he can jump from roof to roof and go to the mountain, you know. And when they, they came. But between time, the underground army, the FFE, we call Force Française de l'Intérieur, they came on a village because they need food. They don't have any more food. And they ask everybody if they have any food for the FFE. And everybody was bringing food. I never forget. I was at the place where it was that truck with those guys who have all a band on a, and it was FFI, FFE, mm -hmm. Force Française de l'Intérieur. And we don't know exactly us being kids, you know, what he was. And uh, they, they have a truck and everybody bring food, potatoes, vegetables, fruits, you know. And uh, I was with my friend Denise and I say, look, on the second floor where the priests live, the priests open the window a little bit like that. We have those things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he writes things. She said, I wonder what he writes. Then uh, a boy was with us. His name was Ivan. He says, oh, he must write the name of the people who came here. We have to say to the guys. And he went. And uh, he says, uh, is the priest here? I think he writes the name of everybody who brings food to you. Well, two of those guys, they knock the door but he don't open the door. They, they broke the door, they go inside the house, they went upstairs, and here he was right. The kid was right. He write the name of everybody who bring food for the FFE. But, you know, you imagine a priest, he will have, <laughs> he will have a cross over his bed, because mm -hmm. in France, <laughs> is where everybody put a cross over the bed, you know? Right. No, he has two portraits, of Hitler and Mussolini. And at that moment, the two guys who went in, they bring him out, and by the window, they threw the thing. The village was, they don't believe, you know, and they took with them. They took the priest with them. Apparently, we found out, they judge him, and uh, they condemn him, and somebody says, I think he was condemned to die and perhaps he, was, he died and they buried him on the mountains. But now I found last year one of the daughters of Monsieur, Monsieur Kruger, she says they don't kill him. They let him go by himself and they don't want to hear about him anymore. But now I asked a few times my cousin to tell me where Janine know that. And every time she send me letters, she forget to tell me. She says, and my last letter I received from her, she meet the, the daughter of Monsieur Kruger, uh -huh. and, and she forget to, to ask her again. <laughs> and I, every letter now I ask her, mm -hmm. because I would like to know where she hear that. Do you remember when that incident, incident took place? Well, it was during the occupation of the German. It was not too far uh, when the Americans, they came to, to help us. Mm -hmm. 
It was not too far. It mm -hmm. must be perhaps, I, I can remember, but okay, 1943 old? or 1944. Okay. Let me put it this way. How old was your baby brother? when this incident took place? Was he a little uh, around six months, a year old? Well, he, he, he must be, by them, he must be perhaps three, three years old, perhaps, three or four, because mm -hmm. he born in 1942, right. and that happens perhaps 44, perhaps 44? two years okay. old. All right, 44. I remember when the day the Germans, they came, mm -hmm. and they asked for the priest, but the priest was not here because the FFE, they took him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, they ask people, and all the men of the village, they are gone, mm -hmm. but one, Camille, Camille Monceux, I remember him. He was a prisoner of war, mm -hmm. and then, because he was so sick, they, they told him to go back. And here he says, I have enough. He stay here, and when the Germans ask him questions, he play deaf and mute, you know? Mm -hmm. He play like uh, if he was and uh, they don't bother anymore with him. But when they left, they came in bicycle, and they have, uh, I don't know how you call it in English, mitrailleuse? Mitrailleuse. Mitrailleuse. It's something who go far away, you know, pa 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 you know. And they, that, they have that on the bike. And when they are leaving, they turn to look at the village, and they see some people on the mountains moving. And they start to shoot here. And I had three friends. Well, they are older than us. They are 18, 19 years old, you know. And uh, my uncle, Aimé, was with them. And they start to shoot. And they are on the back of the rock. And I'm sure on that rock is still the bullets. <laughs> because one of the guys, he was 18, <laughs> she wa he was so scared, he pee on his pants, you yeah. know. <laughs> And, uh, but it was a, a, a terrible moment because when we hear the, the firing from the Germans, my mother put us under a bed. Mm -hmm. Stay on the bed, under the bed. Don't move, don't move. But yeah, my baby brother, uh, we have to tell him not to move. <laughs> and it was difficult, you know, because he don't understand. But uh, I remember that day, yeah, it was terrible. And I remember when we bring food to my uncle, is in a, is in a mine called Carmo, but it's far away. And my mother, usually at five o'clock in the morning, was bringing the food and hung up the back on a tree because the animals they don't go. And uh, after a while, they decided it will be better if it was us, the kids, you know, to bring because uh, we never know, you know. And uh, I I remember bringing the fruit on that tree a few times. And my grandmother told me, everybody ask you where you are going. She give me a pot where you can put milk. You go on a farm, buy some milk, you know, she told me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because my cousin Rene was doing that also. And his sister Jacqueline, we are this image, she was doing that. And they don't remember that. I say, how come? How come they can remember when we bring the food to my uncle and hang up the back on a tree? They say, I don't remember. But now um, is a plaque on that mine. Mm -hmm. They put a plaque of dull people who are here, you know. And my, my cousin went this summer. She went, uh, he was a you know, an anniversary or mm -hmm. something like that. And she went when they put that plaque. Mm -hmm. And he's a doctor. I know him. Um, and uh, he was hired on that place. Mm -hmm. He's still in life, him. Right. He lives in Prada. Yeah. And uh, Dr. Goujon, he was mm -hmm. his, his name. And uh, I said to my cousin, I would like more information mm -hmm. by him, ask him. But she forget to told me, I have to, I have to, call, to, <laughs> to write to her tomorrow. I, I will remind her mm -hmm. about that also. Just a matter of clarification. Uh, th during the war, uh, your uncles, were they in the resistance or were they? Yeah, they after the war, yeah. Uh -huh. 
when the Germans invaded us mm -hmm. and we lost the war against the German, right. uh, all the people come back. Mm -hmm. But they go on the uh, underground army. The majority go mm -hmm. on the underground army. And, 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 your, and your father stayed with your family? Yeah, my, my father stayed. Well, he's still working during the, inv the invasion of mm -hmm. the Germans because he was on a place where he was he was a bookkeeper mm -hmm. of that place during the war because of his accident. And then after the war, they keep him, the Germans, they keep him here mm -hmm. also because, you know, we can buy food with money only. We have to have a special cards with coupons, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, is by division. The babies, they are, uh, the coupons, they are the letter E. Me, I, I was J2. Mm -hmm. And then is G3, those who are 14, 15, you know. Mm -hmm. And the coupons for food, they are more precious than money. Mm -hmm. Because if you lose your coupons, you don't have food, you know. And the German, they keep my father on that office with other people. They are a little bit like prisoners in some ways. The difference, he can come home every day, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, to distribute the coupons. But he was, he was very, very bad. Mm -hmm. we, we are starving. And until we went to Mosse with my cousins and everything, here he was good because uh, my, my uncle don't need to go on to catch a rabbit. He was very athletic. He ran more, more fast than rabbits sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. And I teach him, uh, I teach my husband, I mean, how to catch trouts on a... Oh. On a in the stream. On the river, yeah, yeah. on the stream, mm -hmm. because is what my uncles they are doing. They do all by hand. And I said to my husband, you put your feet on the water, you see, uh -huh. the trout, they are under the big rocks. And then you put your feet, and when the trout come, boom, mm -hmm. you catch. He never do. <laughs> he, after a few minutes, he said, I don't feel my feet, I don't feel my hands, because <laughs> he was... The summer, that is, uh, is when I ma marry him. Mm -hmm. He was my honeymoon. I told him for honeymoon, I want to go on the mountains where we are during the war. And <laughs> we live on the, on the house, it's for renting people. We call Maison Cantonnière. It's only A on the floor, beautiful. It will be a beautiful house to mm -hmm. me. It was a big chimney, you know. Okay. And I try to teach him what my uncles they are doing, mm -hmm. but um, he said, I don't feel my feet, it's so cold. Well, the snow was melting and... <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he never catch that, you know. Let's get back a few years, uh, so still when you're growing up in France. Uh, did you have a radio or any other means of... Okay, let's have it. <laughs> yeah. That, you have to hide. Uh -huh. We hide and we put very low, you know, because the Germans, they have a system where they know mm -hmm. where is some radio and they confiscate them, you know. And uh, we found when you are on a second floor, they have difficulties to find was a radio. Well, on the second floor of the house where my parents they are living, it was an old lady. And I remember every night my father goes and uh, listen, and then take notes, and then he told us the news, and mm -hmm. then we burn the paper. <laughs> right. Now, the right, uh, was he listening to the BBC? Or? He was from England. England, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's where we learn, through that music I found, is something going in England, and the goal who was a general, well, at that time he was not general yet, uh, he went with a bunch of uh, French uh, soldiers, mm -hmm. they went to England. And that is a story by himself, but I don't know too much about, mm -hmm. you know. I hear about, uh, the, he was a lot of foreign soldiers who go to England. Mm -hmm. And then, from England, the Americans, they came to help us. And he was the debarkment in, uh, in Normandy. And, uh, I remember we feel, we feel something big is coming, you know. You, you feel on your bones, you know, mm -hmm. something big is coming. So when did the something big arrive? Yeah, 1945. 1945. Oh, that was, 
people are happy, but in the same time they are very sad mm -hmm. because we have the news through the radio also. We have the news. Um, a lot of countries, you know, mm -hmm. England, France, and uh, Americans, not only they do the debarkment by the sea, what it was the bigger thing, that, but by airplane also. Mm -hmm. And here, the Germans, the, oh my gosh, the Germans, they killed the parachutists. Mm -hmm. And uh, when one guy, he ended on a, on a needle of the, the church. By the steeple? Right on yeah. the steeple? Yeah. Oh. His parachute. He can, he can move it, and he can get here, and the Germans, they kill him. Oh. On the front. And he was so sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. I wish at that time, I keep the newspaper we had because also we buy newspapers who are underground. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of things underground uh, to to hide for the Germans. You know, mm -hmm. it's too bad because there's a lot of things I, I don't quite remember now. You know, mm -hmm. uh, if somebody talk about, I say, oh yeah, I remember. You know. Did any Allied troops go to your village, or just one morning the Germans were gone? Well, uh, it was not so easy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in my town, uh, and s s some small village, is still Germans, mm -hmm. and um, they are made prisoner. And I remember, on a village where my cousins they are living before the war, he, he was a German, was prisoner. He was the only one mm -hmm. here, and. Uh, he was a nice guy, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. He, he's a soldier. He was the war. He, he, he do what his country mm -hmm. told him to do, but he was a very nice guy. And they make prisoner here for two years. He was some soldiers who keep an eye on him, but uh, you know he was he, he he has no family in Germany. And he told them, you know what, if you can. Keep me here for the rest of my life. I will be happy. I don't have any more parents, no more siblings. Everybody is dead in my in Germany. I will stay here. And finally, after the liberation and uh, after all quiet down, uh, they make papers for him to stay. Mm -hmm. And he marry a French girl here. Yeah? And he asked it. I don't know. He must still. He must still here. Because he must be on his 90s now, because mm -hmm. he was very, very young. Mm -hmm. I remember him, very nice looking guy. He was much older than us. I mm -hmm. was 15 at that time. Mm -hmm. He must be perhaps 20, 21, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, uh, <laughs> he, he looks, we are happy, we are help. Because the Americans, they don't come only by Normandy. They came also by Africa mm -hmm. to Toulon. And I remember at that time, the English, they have to destroy some military boats in south of France on the Mediterranean, Churchill order to destroy. And some French soldiers, they die on that mm -hmm. uh, thing. I don't know exactly what it was, but I remember vaguely that. And uh, they have to destroy because they don't want the, the Germans and Italians to, to have a grip on it. Mm -hmm. I forget, but uh, it's a big story. I will like a uh, check on, <laughs> on the library about that because uh, I know it was a big deal at that time mm -hmm. also. So it's now the end of the war. Yeah, it's the end of the war. Did you see any Allied soldiers? In my town, we see only few. Mm -hmm. Mostly, they are on the places where they can shelter them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, who are, uh, I don't know how you call, uh, where the military, mm -hmm. where they train the militaries, you know. Mm -hmm. It was a lot in Orléans, mm -hmm. a lot in La Rochelle, uh, in Normandy also, mm -hmm. on the north of France, and then uh, next of the Riviera. Marseille. Mm -hmm. Here he saw. He's where some they meet French girls and they marry him. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, they stay they, after the liberation. They stay a long time here mm -hmm. to help us. You know, and 
Then some French, they came mad at them because they said the war is finished, why they don't go back to to the United States, right. you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know why some people, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of ladies, they marry them, mm -hmm. you know. I had three friends here who marry, who are French, who marry GIs, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, so now you're about 14, 15 years old. 15, I was yes. 15, yeah. And uh, after the war, did you, were you still in the village or did you go back oh, to... Oh no, I go back for the school because uh -huh. on a village, I went three grades below where I was in my town. Oh boy. <laughs> my mother says, oh, I see, I, I already do those grades, you know. No, 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 you will still learn, you know, and uh, I learn a lot also, mm -hmm. yeah. I remember it was nice because I feel good because I, 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 I was better mm -hmm. <laughs> than the kids of three years younger, you right. know. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had a good teacher, mm -hmm. but uh, he divided the class by, mm -hmm. he put some tables like that, and here we are those who are three mm -hmm. years more, and he teaches. And what did your parents do after the war? Was it back to the hotel cafe? Or? Uh, no, 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 no. They sold that. Mm -hmm. No. My, my father was working for an English company. Well, the, the BP, the British Petroleum. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was the chief of the depot on my town of that company. Mm -hmm. The one who, who put so many oil in a, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Oh, British Petroleum. Yeah. Okay. My father was working for them. Okay. Until he died. Well, until he retired. Mm hmm Yeah. And uh, my mother still home, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went back in school. I went back in college. And um, then my mother was... <laughs> She liked to be in charge of everything. She was very bossy. She was very smart. Mm -hmm. And um, she wanted me to study something she likes, but I don't, you know. And she says she registered me for all the contests for jobs after college, you know. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to work on a bank. She wanted me to work on a post office because at that time, all those things, they are related with the government. And when mm -hmm. you grow old, you have a good pension. Mm -hmm. And she was thinking that way. But me, I was not thinking that mm -hmm. way at all. Me, <laughs> at the, in school, I, I, I do very well on sports, you know. Mm -hmm. And I do basketball. And after college, some uh, club asked me if I work in basketball for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do that. And all my life was around basketball. <laughs> I do fencing also at that time. But basketball, and guess what? It, it was in 19, I can remember now. I forget that now. Oh. Well, the, the Globe Trotters, they came uh -huh. to my town in Perpignan. Oh, wow. And we work uh, before them, you know. Uh -huh. They chose uh, the best team of the town to work before them. And we work be, be, before them. I remember about the team was very good too, uh, from the post office. Mm -hmm. And uh, we win. And then they teach us trick after they, they play. Oh. oh, it was awesome. It was <laughs> so good, you know. And uh, that was the first team of the Globetrotters. He must be 48, 49. Yeah, that's just about right. He, wow. Yeah. Amazing. And uh, it's too bad. I, I don't cut the news because all the newspapers, they talk about, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I, um, I, I regret I don't keep the mm -hmm. newspaper. Because when something interests me, I cut from the newspaper all the time, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah. And uh, then my mother, she, she registered me. Because in France, to have a job, you don't have to bring a resume or the scenes from the school. You have to pass a test. Mm -hmm. She registered me at, at every test for a job who deal with the government. And uh, <laughs> I don't like, I don't like at all. <laughs> and then the school called me mm -hmm. and he says, because uh, 
you pass an exam to go out of the school also. And then from that thing, they, they put you on jobs also. And the 10 first, they are put on a job. And I was on the 10 of the first, and they put me on a distillery of liquor called Le Liqueur du Canigou, like a secretary. Mm -hmm. Because here was a lady who was expecting a baby and uh, she want to train before she leave. She want to train somebody on that place. Uh -huh. And I went here and <laughs> I, <laughs> here I had uh, some funny experience because, you know, I never leave my family. <laughs> I, I, at 19 years old, I never kiss a boy, you know. Because uh, all the time you have a chaperon to go, mm -hmm. especially in Perpignan. Perpignan, we have, uh, we have customs who date from the Spanish Inquisition. Oh boy. You know, uh, women never go out afternoon by yourself on a town. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I hate that, you know. And well, anyway, uh, they put me, the, the school put me, Les Liqueurs du Canigou. And it's to replace Madame Amiel, the lady who was living, to have a baby. And uh, one day, the bookkeeper, I don't know when the bosses, they are not here, he was the boss, but I don't know. He came in our office and I was very busy. I have to finish the job before six, mm -hmm. uh, when we leave the job, right? And uh, he came here and he says, you, the kid, she says, he says to me, Go downstairs and bring me uh, what you call a glacial. Glacial is mint with water, mm -hmm. you know, it's very refreshing. And I say, I'm sorry, I can't go. I have to finish the job before. Sis, you do nothing. I say, why you don't go? I don't know, he was, uh, mm -hmm. the, he, he replaced the boss, you know. Mm -hmm. And Madame Amiel says nothing. And then he asks her, do you want a mint? A glacial, we call glacial. Uh -huh. And uh, she said, no, thank you. And <laughs> then, <laughs> when he left, she says to me, why you don't go and take one for you and for mm -hmm. me? I went downstairs, and all the employees that downstairs said, oh, Pierrette, Pierrette. And they came to kiss me. I say, it's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I think because they do that for the birthdays, you know? <laughs> and I say, it's not my birthday. No, 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 no. You had the guts to, to say something to, to Monsieur Jourdan. I say, what I say? You told him to go pick up the drinks. You know, he's the boss. Oh, I don't know that, but uh, he has me and I'm busy and he's not busy, you know? <laughs> well, a few days later, the Madame Amiel, she says to me, you know what? Monsieur Jourdan came and he told me the, the first mistake you make, you are out of the job. Oh my gosh, I say that is bad for the school also because it's the school. Mm -hmm. who, and then they will report that to the school, you know. And <laughs> I say, I have to be. And she says to me, you know, if somebody, if some ladies call and they ask for him, say, he's busy. Mm -hmm. Don't call him. Say, he's busy, and take a message. And always the message will be, the tailor is ready. Okay, I say. Then, <laughs> one day, a lady called, I took the phone, and uh, he says, may I speak with Monsieur Jourdan? And I say, oh, I'm sorry, he's busy at that moment. I, I repeat what the lady told me to do. <laughs> She said, oh, can you, can you tell him the tailor is, uh, is ready? Mm -hmm. I said, sure. And uh, when he go out of his office, I told him, Monsieur Jourdain, uh, somebody call and they say, the, your tailor is, be, is, uh, is ready. Mm -hmm. But every week, it was something like that. I say, how many tailors? I know he dressed good, that guy, but <laughs> I say, well, how many tailors he, he fix or buy, you know? And uh, one day I went on his office to pick up a file because the, the people who deliver 
the because it's a distillery of liquor. Mm -hmm. They deliver liquor. They deliver uh, jelly because mm -hmm. they make the jelly with the fruits also mm -hmm. and syrups. And uh, the the guy who delivered that in all the cafes uh, around from town to town make a mistake. He delivered the round order to one. The same town, but mm -hmm. <laughs> different cafes. And uh, of course, both they call, and uh, I went to check on her file, and I was, and the file, Monsieur Jourdain has a big, big desk, mm -hmm. and the files, they are on a, a big draw right. on his right side. And I went here, and I, I have a, a paper on my hands, and uh, with the name of the things, mm -hmm. you know. I opened the door, he came by the back of me, and he put his hands on my breast. Whoa. <sighs> and I say, what you are doing, I say. And uh, I can I can say anything, I can defend me, because I have already the file on that end. I have another paper here. And I turn, and I bite him on the arm. And he has a, a nice shirt. You put over the pants, you know, mm -hmm. we call marinière. Right. And uh, my parents, they don't want me to put lipstick because they say, mm -hmm. at that time, it's only bad girls who put lipstick mm -hmm. or nail polish. But I buy one. And uh, when I left the house, two blocks fa after, I put some lipstick. Mm -hmm. And on the evening, <laughs> I <Yeah>. remove. <laughs> <laughs> before I arrive okay, on. Okay, you just But uh, <laughs> I had lipstick at work, and uh, <laughs> the lipstick was, uh, oh. And he came, and he says, she's going out now, she's going out. Uh -huh. And he says, well, you have to see what she did. And he, he don't say anything anymore. And then she asked me, what happens? And I told him, I, I told her, uh, on a lady, I told her he, he, what he did. And at that moment, she says, you know about the suits who are uh, ready? He's a pimp, mm -hmm. she says. I say, anyone to put me out? Oh, good <laughs> Lord. But at that time, she says to me, you know what? You will be better not to work here because mm -hmm. I'm working here for eight years. I never had a rest. And you, you start below the, the money I star, and you will never have a mm -hmm. rest. But I say, well, I have to, to check and pass tests, you know, the, the, on the jobs I like. She says, you know what, go to see my husband. He's a colonel, and uh, they need people, secretaries on an army. Why you don't do that? I went to see her husband. He gave me all the things to pass the test, mm -hmm. and I went. And the test was easy. It was like if I was uh, the first years of college, you know, mm -hmm. very easy. And uh, I removed my papers and I, I feel all the girls on the, on the room, they look at me and I say, oh, oh, they look at me because I'm fir the first one I give the paper. But I had two friends I meet here on that room and I was waiting outside for them, you know. Mm -hmm. And when they came outside, uh, I say, that was easy, eh? Mm -hmm. They say, you crazy? It was difficult. We had three problems of arithmetic, three of geometry, three of algebra, so easy. Like uh, the first year of college, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they dict you um, a letter. You have to take in stenography mm -hmm. and then type. And it was so easy. And uh, I say, oh my gosh, it's more easy than when I was in school. And then everybody who came out, they say, oh, it was difficult, it was difficult. I say, but my mother, she's good on math, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I give the problems to my mother. She took like everybody else. I say, forget, I, I will not pass. I will have to stay at the liquor of the, the canigou. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, after that, uh, Oh, about four days after, mm -hmm. it was seven o'clock on the night, knock at the door, we are eating. My mother said, oh, I'm going. Who, who is coming here? Mm -hmm. Well, she went, it was two policemen, and they said to my mother, Pierrette Boussier lives here? She says, yeah, well, what happens? 
Oh, nothing. I was the only one who passed the test. <laughs> wow. I had the job, uh -huh. but I had two days to go in Paris and mm -hmm. hear my parents. Oh my gosh, you are too living alone. And my father says, talk only to people with uniforms. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> because in my town, he was a policeman. Everybody know he was married and he has so many mistresses. Mm -hmm. Of course, he has a uniform. And I was thinking, my father doesn't know. <laughs> but um, I went to Paris and uh, two days. My mother thing in Paris, it must be called, she gave me blankets and everything. I have two big suits, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I, can, uh, I can carry them. Mm -hmm. I arrived in Paris, it was strike, general strike. Nothing was working, <laughs> just the military trucks and the uh, taxis. No electricity, no gas, no transportation, nothing. It was 1952. The 2 of December 1952, I arrived in Paris and nothing working. I arrived at the station, I carry my suits, and here <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the policemen they say, next, next, and those suits they are so heavy, and they say next for the taxi also. Mm -hmm. Well, a taxi, when it was my turn, the taxi arrived, uh, I opened the door, I put my ring cord, my pocketbook on a, on the back seat, I turn to take the, the thing, but they are heavy, you know. I push one, the taxi was gone. Oh, no. And I say, oh, my gosh. I say to the policeman, where he went? Well, I don't want to stay more than three minutes. And I look, and the taxi went further. The guy went out, and uh, I recognize the guy. I'm glad, you know. I went, and he told me to come when, when I... He found I was pushing the, the two things. He came to help me. And I say, I almost had a heart attack because my pocketbook and my, uh, I had my salary of a month mm -hmm. on my pocketbook and I la left on your back seat. You crazy, you are in Paris, you don't do that. And he asked me where I'm going. I say, Rue Saint Dominique. It was the Ministry of the War, mm -hmm. and I went here, and they affect me on a six bureau. Is a, a bureau who was uh, managing the affairs of what you call Vietnam. Mm -hmm. We call Indochina. And uh, I start to work here, and here, every three months, you can pass an exam, and your salary go 3,000 francs. It was mm -hmm. francs at that time, you know. Uh, I don't know how much it was, the dollar at that time. Mm -hmm. I was not involved with dollars at that mm -hmm. time. And uh, every three months I passed a test, I passed a test, I had a good salary. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second day, I meet my husband, not knowing he mm -hmm. will be my husband. He was doing his military service, and uh, they put him in charge of the mess of the officers. And uh, by then, <laughs> When I went to the mess of the officers, after a few months, I worked. Uh, I was a lieutenant, but uh, you know, working only on the office. I never do any any thing like the army, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we marry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> after he was, he, he finished the military. He has to do eighteen months thing because mm -hmm. we still have uh, problems with the Vietnam, you know. We call Indochina, mm -hmm. and uh, he has to do, instead of one year, 18 months, mm -hmm. and then we marry when he come back. And, and when was that? That was in 1953. Okay. So you're a nice young couple in France, and what happens next? Next? Okay, first of all, on my wedding, uh -huh. we planned the wedding. Then, two weeks before the wedding, you have to go to the city hall to know if the papers, they are fine. If their name is right, nice, mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. My maiden name was Boussier. Like, uh, here, Noé is mm -hmm. the name of my husband. Noé with an accent. Boussier at the end, the Y with an accent. They forget the accent on my birth certificate. 
And the lady at the city hall says, Miss Boussy? I say, no, my name is Boussier. Well, they forget an accent. I say, put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, 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 that is an ad for the civil thing. Well, no, 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 you have to call back. You have to call back where you born, meaning Mosse, the small mm -hmm. village, and <laughs> they rectify that. Okay, I call immediately. And guess what? It took one month. <laughs> and two weeks after that, I was going to be married. I have to change the dates, you know. I'm glad it's not like in America, <laughs> where they make big weddings. In France, it's family and friends, mm -hmm. easy going, you know. You, you call them or you send a letter, I'm going to be married. It's not the big first like here, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm glad of that. And uh, when we chose another date, it was good. And guess what? My father was a singer. That day we chose was singing on the front of the pop in Italy. And uh, oh, he says, I'm going to cancel. I say, no, 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 no. It's unique that, mm. you know. When you will go sing on the front of the pop again, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that he, he was just that day. And uh, we decide, my, my mother was happy, I say that, you know, because <laughs> she wanted to go with my father mm -hmm. in Italy, you know. And then uh, when we are, um, when we, we, do, we do the wedding, an uncle of my husband replaced my father. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the next day we went to south of France and here we make like a second wedding <laughs> <laughs> with the family. We are 101. <laughs> and uh, it was really fun because at that time we, we are already married, you know. Mm -hmm. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. And then my father can go to, he, he went to, uh, to sing on the front of the pop, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have to live in Paris where mm -hmm. my husband took the business of his father because they bring him in Paris when he do his military service because his father passed away. And in France, the oldest boy, when a father died, came the chief of the family. Mm -hmm. And he was doing his military service. They say, you have to go where your family is. And they send him in Paris. And uh, he was, they put him on the army, on a, I don't know how you say that in English, anti-aerien. is the things who shoot the airplanes, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you call it in English. Uh, anti-aircraft. Anti oh, anti-aircraft, anti yes. Anti-aircraft. Mm -hmm. He was that. Mm -hmm. He don't learn too much about that, but then they put him in Paris because he's pa his father passed away, mm -hmm. and it's where I met him because I was going to eat at the mess of the officers. Right. Mm -hmm. And they put him maitre d' here. Mm -hmm. And the first time I talked to him is for a complaint also. <laughs> because uh, the, we are coming, and they put you on the, the table, they are filled. You try to go on a table where it's only four people because it will be more easy, you know, mm -hmm. will, it's filled more fast. And it's some tables of clear people. And just that day, I was on a table of, it was three ladies already, and I was alone. He put mm -hmm. me on that table. And then they serve grapes for dessert. And me, I came, it was in September. <laughs> My family has vineyards. And the grapes, you eat the grapes very ripe, you know, very juicy. And here, they serve grapes who are cut, green, they are mm -hmm. not ripe, you know, they are a little, you know. Yeah, hard. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he came from table to table, you know, as I was everything, I say everything is fine, but the grapes, you know, they, they cut those grapes green, you know, before they, they are ripe. Mm -hmm. Hey, he says, I'm for nothing about that, but I say, you must tell them. He said, where? I'm not in charge of <laughs> bringing the food, you know. And say, well, tell them to the people who bring the food. Mm -hmm. And then he, when I was going out, he was waiting for me. And he asked me where I came from because I have a South accent. And I said, Perpignan. Oh, Perpignan. Oh, my father will like to retire in Perpignan. Oh, why? I know it's a beautiful town, but how? He says, because the temperatures on the winter, they are always nice. 
the more low you can go is 18 degrees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's, he's fine, you know. And, uh, well, he, he never went because he passed away, but uh, mm -hmm. I never met him. And after the military service, my husband took the factory, he directed the factory of his father, mm -hmm. you know. Now, how long were you in Paris? Uh, five years. And what happened after that? I came in America. And what were the circumstances? The circumstance, the older sister mm -hmm. of my husband married an American mm -hmm. who came in this country at six months old from Ireland. Mm -hmm. Jimmy was Irish. <laughs> and they are living in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And um, when my husband was the director of the factory of his father, and grandfather also. Mm -hmm. His grandfather invent, he was not his real grandfather, he was the second husband mm -hmm. of his grandmother. Right. But they call him grandfather mm -hmm. because he's the only one they know, you know. But he was not the father of his father. Mm -hmm. And he invent the staples. Oh, really? Yeah. His name was Charpentier, mm -hmm. his last name. And uh, he invent the staple and he has the brevet of invention and went to the, the French government to tell them that is good, is going to revolutionize mm. the offices. Mm -hmm. The French government said, ah, no, 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 they don't want. He sell to the Americans. <laughs> the Americans, they give a lot of money for him. He opened his own factory. And also, he was fixing sewing machines, typewriter. That guy was fantastic, you know, mm. he knows about, he loves mechanics and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, at, at that time, the typewriter is the ones, you right. know, mm -hmm. the old ones. And uh, sewing machines where you push the thing, uh -huh. nothing electric, you know. And um, he has 60 people working on a factory. And uh, <laughs> when he died, it was a scandal because three ladies, they came on his burial. Nobody knows them. They say, who are those ladies? They are so young. Who are they? And he was on, on almost in his 80s. I think he died 78, mm -hmm. 79. And here his ladies are about 28, 30 years old. And uh, somebody of the family says, we have to ask how they know him. I was, he was my lover. And the three, they don't know each other either. <laughs> and... Uh, when the grandmother heard that, she faint. We have to bring her to the hospital. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, that is on the family. Mm -hmm. Nobody talk about it anymore because everybody passed away, you know. But um, it was funny. <laughs> and uh, then my, my sister-in-law, Giselle, I told her, my mother-in-law does know anything about the factory. And my husband has terrific ideas to do different things, you know. And, uh, oh, no, 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 no. She put always, like we say, the stick on the wheels, you know. Mm -hmm. And me, my husband don't like to write. Me, I was writing to his sister here in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. I give news of all the family. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, Jack is not very happy on a job, but, uh, you know, I don't know what he would like to do. He was, he was an engineer. And here he found he was restrained, you know, he can do more. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, why are you not coming in United States? Oh, I say, he will not like. And I say, I have an idea. One day, I will send you the money for the trip and tell him you invite him. But finally, either she don't want my money, she is her who invited him. He was her favorite brother. She invited him and uh, he came in America. He stayed eight months. He learned, in, he learned English already in school in France. Mm -hmm. Me, I learned Spanish, but him, he learned English. And uh, he went to Harvard University on the evening, you know, for adults to right. learn. Uh -huh. And uh, he learned the language, especially for his job, you know. And uh, he became an engineer in Melrose, in a company called uh, Filter Corporation. Mm -hmm. They do filters. T 
tiny filters, filters mm -hmm. huge filters, they do everything mm -hmm. like that. And uh, they, give a, they give him a contract for two years. Mm -hmm. And I say, oh, for two years is fine. I will learn English, <laughs> you know, but I never did. <laughs> I learned English because I'm here and people around me speak English. I wish I went on a school for mm -hmm. that, you know. And I try with books, yeah. And I read a lot in English. Mm -hmm. I understand when I read, I understand everything. If it's a word I never hear, I write it. But when I speak, I need lessons on phonetic. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good ear for sounds, you know. So now you're in the United States. Yeah. Uh, it's ostensibly in a two-year contract with the husband. Yeah. And you're living in Melrose. No, no? we live in Malden. He works oh, in Malden. Melrose. Okay. Well, he took uh, Malden, the apartment, because in Paris we live in one room. Mm -hmm. uh, bigger than that one, but we live one mm -hmm. room. And since they have to destroy those buildings where we are living, because they died since the Middle Age. Mm -hmm. But at the bottom of those buildings, is a, we are on a Jewish neighborhood in Paris. It's called Quatrième Arrondissement, and it's all the Jewish businesses. Mm -hmm. And they are on the bottom of all the buildings. But the town of uh, the town, <laughs> the city of Paris found they are insalubre, they are not healthy, those business, right. mm -hmm. the, those buildings and they want to destroy completely. Okay. But it was a church, St. Paul Church, who is magnificent, they will keep that. But all the businesses on the bottom of every building, they are against that, because it was a good neighborhood, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we live here, and they, they're still here. Mm -hmm. Never they destroy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they will be for a few more centuries. Right. Now. So you're, uh, you lived in Malden originally. When yeah. did you move to Natick? We moved to Natick because I had a new ba Oh, we came in America with two babies already. Two babies, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One was 18 months old, the mm -hmm. youngest, and the other one was three years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we had an, uh, the third one, mm -hmm. my son Mark. And because my husband was working in Melrose, he says, you have to find a doctor in Melrose. Like that, on my break, I can see you when the baby born. Because in France, you stay two weeks on the maternity. Mm -hmm. Here, I stay four days only <laughs> at the hospital. But anyway, uh, his factory, well, I don't know, his business, where mm -hmm. he was an engineer, was across a big park. I forget the name of the park. I took many pictures of that part with my mm -hmm. kids. But anyway, Mark born in Melrose, my third son mm -hmm. born in Melrose. And uh, in France, you bring the babies outside every day, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a, a carriage. We live on those house, American house, where they have a porch on every floor. Mm -hmm. It's three floors. A triple decker. Yeah, mm -hmm. a triple deck. And uh, the, the owner was Italian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, he understands Spanish. I can, at the beginning, I can speak Spanish with him. And he has a girl, the oldest girl, who was 14 years old. And if I have to go to buy something, you know, uh, she was my babysitter. Mm -hmm. And I left the carriage on a porch on the ground floor where the owner of the house was living. And I asked him, he said, yeah. And one day, I found drops of dogs on the carriage. I was bringing the baby, oh no, I had to go upstairs, I have to clean everything and disinfect everything. The next day, same thing. And that, for a full week, I came mad, I say, I don't know who is that dog, but I will find. But he was not a dog. He was a lady across the street who was jealous of me, but I don't know she was jealous of me. I found by the neighbors. But because I don't speak English, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't talk too much with the neighbor. And I talk with those who can speak French or Spanish. It was a lady on the street. Mm -hmm. She speaks French a little bit, but very little. And uh, then when the, the owner who speaks little bit Spanish. And uh, I found it was a lady who do that. And I catch her doing it. Mm -hmm. And here I say to my husband, I take the kids, I'm going back to France. At that time, because we mm -hmm. start in United States, 
like newlywed with two kids, we have to buy all the furniture for the apartment because we start, we put a lot of money on that. And uh, he said, okay, oh yeah, because they renew his contract for two more, two more years. Mm -hmm. And he said, I say, I'm leaving, I'm going to France. He says, hold on. Because we start like newlywed and we put a lot of money on the furniture and things like that, uh, he decide to have another job because he work at seven o'clock in the morning and at four o'clock he's home, you know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I remember on the summer he was good because from Malden we go to the river beach, you know, on mm -hmm. the summer. Over there, okay, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he says, hold on, I found a job, he found, then he found a job on Channel 2. Mm -hmm. It was a program called Parlons Francais. And uh, he found a job here mm -hmm. with three other guys. And that was fun. And uh, he says, just a minute, don't go on your big horses, because mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's an expression. Mm -hmm. Quiet down, I'm going to ask on Chanel too, because they are all educators on that program, where is the best town to live, and we will move. Because uh, two more years here, mm -hmm. but he stay eight years. They renew the contract every two years, you mm -hmm. know, for eight years. Well, after five years, we learn we can come Americans. And he says, you know what? I like here, he said, why we don't stay here? Mm -hmm. I say, okay, but if something happens to you, I will, uh, <laughs> I will have just the kids with me. I will go back in Perpignan with my family is, you know, because I miss my family. And um, he says, okay, I was the only one. All the kids, they came American. Mm -hmm. My husband was American, and, uh, but me. And, and there's a reason for that also. It's a contract between England, United States, and France for all the people who do the war or from those countries who came to live in America, they don't lose their citizenship. Mm -hmm. But Jews men, not women. Mm. And uh, is why I don't want. If mm. he was like him, I say, sure. Because otherwise, when you come back to your country and uh, you, came, you lose your citizenship, you have to go in the front of a judge again, take mm -hmm. a lawyer, blah, blah, blah. And I say, no. And <laughs> then, Oh, it was uh, 1950. I, I know Reagan was president. It was 19... 1980? 80, 81. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I received a letter from the French consular. They say, from now on, all the women, they can, they can come American, but they keep their... And I came American right away mm -hmm. because all my family was American, you know. Uh -huh. And every two weeks, uh, two weeks, two years, <laughs> We go in vacation in France with the mm -hmm. kids because I continue to speak French to the children. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I had a, my second son, 14 years old, one day. He says, Mommy, I'm coming with my friends to play at home. Please, please, don't speak French with me, okay? Don't speak French on the front of my kids. Mm -hmm. And I say, why not? No, I don't want. <laughs> that hurts me at the beginning. Mm. And then I understand, you know. And uh, now, my, my kids, they understand French fluently. But they speak only English with me. And I speak always French with them. Mm. Only my oldest. Mm -hmm. My oldest, if he calls me, is always in French. Uh -huh. And we speak French. But the other ones, I was on a train with my youngest one, mm -hmm. who lives in Netik also. Yeah, and okay, to come back to Netik, mm -hmm. uh, at that time, my husband says, I will ask at the Chanel too. And they say, go to the west of Boston, is much better. Okay, and we start to look. We start by Newton, you know, Wellesley, Netik, and Sudbury. At Sudbury, at Sudbury, we found the house of our dream. It was a ranch on the top of a hill, mm -hmm. and we take, it was five houses only. They are not finished yet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but when we are ready to pass the papers, 
We chose, we chose the pa- at that time they put paper on the b- bedrooms, you know, right. things like mm-hmm. that. We we chose the color of the kitchen, everything. Mm-hmm. When we are ready at the lawyer to pass the paper, we found I have to walk one mile to take a bus for my six years old to go on, on school. Wow. <laughs> my husband says, why you don't like the, the, the house we see in Etik? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's his old house. <laughs> he was 50 years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was not too old, you know, at that time. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, he says, but look, the school, the, the street is private, it's a circle. And then you have a small pass, and at the end of the pass is a policeman who crossed the kids from the school. Mm-hmm. Why we don't take that one? And two years after, we will look when, like the one we see here. Mm-hmm. And we can sell that, and we and I'm glad because the day we bring the furniture in the house, all the neighbors around they came, welcome to Netik. Mm-hmm. They bring baskets with fruit, a mm-hmm. cake, mm-hmm. flowers. They don't do that anymore now. Mm. And I remember. Because the, the experience I had with that lady who put the drops of the <laughs> on, on, on the carriage yeah. of the baby, when Mrs. Campbell is the first one I talked to, we are not moving yet. We came to clean the house, but it was clean, you know. And uh, my son Ma was 10 months old. And because we move, I can, I, I can cook, you know. I buy, for the first time, I buy baby food. And I was outside on the steps feeding the baby for the lunch. <laughs> and I see Mrs. Campbell two houses down, but he, he is like that. I, mm-hmm. And she waved to me, but me, I turn, I think, mm. because I don't know mm-hmm. her, you know. I turn and I found he was nobody. And she realized, I don't understand, it was me, she waved. Oh, she mm-hmm. came, she says, hi, my name is Anne Campbell. I don't know, perhaps you know her, mm-hmm. because everybody in Etik knows her. She was a terrific woman. Mm-hmm. And she says, um, I'm Ken Ball. If you need any help, I will help you, you know. Mm-hmm. And I start to cry. <laughs> because after the scene with the lady in Malden, I found she was so nice. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I start to cry. And she took a, an handkerchief. Oh, don't, don't cry. And she, <laughs> she, she wiped my, my tears, you know. Mm-hmm. And we came friends since, you mm-hmm. know. And uh, then every neighbor came around. Oh, I see. I never see so many nice people, you know. <laughs> and then my husband says, OK, when you finish to clean here, I'm going to Netic Center to see all the businesses and everything. He come back home and he said, guess what? Guess what I buy? I say, I don't have any idea. He says, it's a French bakery in, in Netic. Antoine. She's Antoine. And uh, I, I, in Paris, when I meet him, when we start to date, I, I, I meet him, but uh, we don't date right away. When I start to date, every time we pass on the front of a bakery in Paris, Oh, he says, I love les palmiers. We you call elephant ears here. <laughs> and always he buy two. And every time we pass on the front of a bakery, he buy les palmiers. And he says, I buy des palmiers. He buy four, one for each, because the 10 months all like that too, you mm-hmm. know. And um, he told me, oh, it's a nice town. I like, I like, he said. And uh, then I came to that bakery to buy the French bread. And I meet Irene. Mm-hmm. Irene, at that time, she was not married. And I think she was dating a policeman at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> every time I came with my kids here, my kids, after high school, they go to say hello at mm-hmm. Irene. But I think it's because she gives cookies also, you know. And I'm a, I'm a friend of her since. Mm-hmm. But now she had a stroke five years ago. Oh. And, yeah. I bring her to a restaurant yesterday mm-hmm. because um, she loves people. She la- she likes to be with around with people, you mm-hmm. know. And her husband don't put her outside, never. Mm-hmm. For five years, every day she's on the living room, lying down on the sofa. And I yell at him. Two weeks ago, I say 
you know what? You put your wife prisoner here. Because she loves people, you don't bring any pain. Oh, because she don't want. And I say, why you don't want? Well, to please him, because he, I, I think he don't want me to go out. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you know what? I wish I call her brothers. And he called me yesterday, he says, oh, uh, I accept uh, to go in a restaurant with you and Irene. I say, fine. And she was so happy. Everybody talked to her. Mm -hmm. And he, she, she feel much better. Mm -hmm. I hope she continue like that every day, you right. know, to go out, to go to the senior center. Mm -hmm. They live at Union Street, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I love Netic. And now my kids, because I had an accident, you know, I fell from a ladder. Oh, dear. Yeah, I stayed five weeks at Leonard Mons Hospital. That was eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's why I walk with the cane. Mm -hmm. But they told me I will never walk again. And uh, you see, it's good to walk with the cane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good now. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm going to be 82 years old. And that is tough. Mm -hmm. Because uh, on my mind, I can do everything, but my body don't follow, you know? Mm -hmm. That is the problem when you grow old. But anyway, and also I had a lot of friends who die and a lot who move to Florida. Mm -hmm. They want me to go to Florida. I say, no, I love Natick. I, if I have to die, I will die in Natick. I okay. love Natick. Okay. Well, Pierrette, yours has been a fascinating life, uh, uh, and we do appreciate you uh, coming to take part in the Natick Veterans Oral History Project. But there is one other story I want you to relate, and this was the story you told me before the interview about uh, you were in kindergarten, and it was the Spanish Civil War. Yeah. And of the, of the girl who yeah. said that, uh, yeah. why don't you go ahead and tell that story? Yeah, that uh, story uh, is when the, the teacher told us to bring clothes, you know, for mm -hmm. uh, the Spaniards. It was horrible because on the newspapers you hear they have to climb the mountain to come, you know, because they try, some, they have people they know in France, they can live with them, mm -hmm. but uh, they have to live far, uh, very fast, you know, and they don't have passports, and that's why they put them on concentration camps. And uh, the kids, it was a lady, she tied her four kids with the rope around her wrist to to push them because they are young, her wrist was completely to the bone, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, she has to go to the hospital and they try to save her, well, they, sa they save mm -hmm. her, uh, her hand. But uh, things like that, you know, it was terrible. Some, they die too, because they pass during the winter and the mountains is with snow and everything. It was terrible. And uh, is where the, child, the teacher at the Kidden Garden, they told us, to bring clothes who are too small for us. And she told us, if you have towels who are too old, don't throw away, because we will make like, if they are in cotton, we will make things for, uh, for the, mm -hmm. the, the Red Cross, you know? Instead of cotton, mm -hmm. uh, they, they will remove the fibers, you know? And that little girl, this imagined me. She says, oh, my parents, they don't like Spaniard. For Spaniard, I, I will not tell them. I will not bring anything. And me, I think that girl was smart mm -hmm. because she has opinion. I don't think I had any opinion at that time. And you time. were about five years old at the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, I, 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 it's the first time I hear a kid talking about something like that, mm -hmm. you know? And I said that to my mother when I arrived. Oh my gosh, she shake me. You know, my parents, they don't have the opportunity to go to the university, but they are very smart. And uh, with my brother, they teach us very well, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I came to Neti, I had a friend who married. Um, her husband was on the Navy, and he's a black guy from Boston. And uh, at that time, my husband opened a restaurant. <laughs> He opened a restaurant in Boston mm -hmm. at Berkeley Street called Maître Jacques. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was working here with Lucien Robert, who was a terrific uh, chef. 
and uh, he teach my husband how to cook and everything. And then Monsieur Robert was a terrific guy, but he was lazy. Mm -hmm. And half of the time he don't come to work. Mm -hmm. And everybody on the restaurant says, why you split the money with him? Mm -hmm. You can have your own restaurant. Well, they opened their own restaurant. Okay, cool. But to come back to the mm -hmm. story of the girl, my parents, they, they told me when somebody is suffering, you don't ask anything, you help them, you know? And uh, I remember I cried a lot that day. I feel bad, I feel very bad. And I was thinking that girl was smart, and now I realize. It's the first time I realize uh, people who don't like other people. Because in my family, everybody likes everybody. We kiss all the time. And um, we, when my aunt came with my cousin, they don't send any letter. We don't have telephones, you know. We mm -hmm. don't send any letter or anything. They came. We are so happy. It was a surprise, you know. And I love those things. And uh, it's the first time I found is a ra ra racial, what you call, people who don't like people. They are uh, mm -hmm. racists. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I, I learned about that. Right. I don't know anything about that before, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but my parents uh, and my brother, they teach us very well. Mm -hmm. My brother, he born premature because when he born the 22 of November is the day the Germans invade my town. But a few weeks before, we see some Germans also on the town. We see something going to happen here. And we have to pick up all food you need before six o'clock, after six o'clock. It's a curfew, you can go out. And my mother says, oh my gosh, it's almost six o'clock. I, I forget to go pick up the, the milk. And she ran, she don't see it was a trench, the, the Germans they make on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. She fell on it, it was eight feet down. Oh dear. She was pregnant of seven months. Mm -hmm. My brother born the next day. Mm -hmm. And uh, she can go out of that. Mm -hmm. that. And she called help. But you know, when I came in America, I found the word help is terrific. Because it's, you say in one time, help. In French, you say, au secours, au secours. It's so long. But help, you can help right away. Mm -hmm. You know, I found it was a terrific word. Mm -hmm. But anyway, my mother called, au secours, au secours. And she was lucky. Is a guy was looking for his cat and he hear her. And he says, what you are doing here? He says, I fell, I fell. He went on his house, he bring a ladder like that. She climbed, she don't broke anything. Well, that's good. But uh, my baby brother born the next day. Mm. And no news because my father has, she had contraction all night, but mm -hmm. I don't know that me, you yeah. know, I learned later on. But uh, my, my father, he says, it's better I bring you at the hospital now. Mm -hmm. And I went to church that, because it was a Sunday. And uh, when I come back, my mother was not home. And my father says, no, I bring her to the hospital. And uh, why? She's sick because I don't know anything also. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost 12. I don't know anything. Mm. <laughs> and <laughs> my brother born that day. And what is very strange. The Germans, every baby who born, you have to bring a, a, a birth certificate of the father of the kid, the grandfather, and the great-grandfather to know if they are not Jews. You right. know? Well, my father took his bike, went where he born, and he bring the certificates and give to the commandateur. And here he found his grandfather, my great-grandfather, born the 22 of November, 1842, 10 o'clock on the night, and my brother, too. If you're out and away, we'll... Uh, we'll I, I we'll talk too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's been fascinating, and we thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank me. you. Okay.